to kind of basic communism, at the end of the day, the workers have to own the means of production. What Marx saw as wrong with the capitalist economy is that the workers did not own the means of production. What the early settlers who came to Israel did is they basically, since they created the economy from scratch, is they created their own means of production. So they banded together in labor unions. And all these labor unions were federated together in what was called the Hista Group, so the Federation of Labor Unions. And the Hista Group essentially established the Israeli economy. Uh, it uh, created plants, created the early industrial plants, uh, land purchase happened collectively. Uh, so the early Israeli economy is a very collective one out of ideology not out of force, not out of revolution. The view was that this is a collective effort. We're in it together. We're buying the land together to make to later establish a state. We are owning the industrial plants together. Uh, we're even marketing, selling the fruits, uh, the vegetables. All of it was done together. And I'm sure some countries in the European Union today uh, because they have absolutely no illusions and no ideals about a communist economy. Uh, the, the Soviet Jews who immigrated to Israel in the 90s after the Soviet Union fell apart and they could come uh, freely, freely to Israel, they are capitalists. Uh, many of them, there's about a million of them who are citizens of Israel out of seven million. They do not understand the lingering attachment to the nostalgia that some Israelis have to those kind of old days when we were all the same and worked the land together because they came from a place where they have absolutely no illusion about that type of economy. Um, so today the country as a whole is firmly globalized, uh, service economy and open economy. Uh, it was about a generation in the making, the change. Uh, but here and there, you will still find a certain lingering kind of feeling of unease about what have we become. Uh, we were kind of these, and again, there's also an element of nostalgia to it. You never know if it was really like that. But there's a sense of we came out to create a completely just utopian society of complete solidarity and equality. And here we are having this mad capitalist rush to make money, high inequality. And even though this is what the world is today, uh, there is still in Israel a lingering sense that somehow this is not OK. Um, so let me stop here as kind of just a very broad overview of Russians and the economy, but certainly Israel today. I would say that Israel today is like any other major uh, industrialized modern economy. Uh, it's the same in the sense that every economy has its own unique problems and differences, but much of the questions, the discussions, the issues that you will see uh, discussed in any place you visit uh, are the issues that are discussed in Israel today. So let me stop here, and we'll go deeper into any aspects that you wish to go. Uh, I guess you touched on it briefly, but what was the catalyst that really shifted this economy in the 80s? I know you said, was it just the infeasibility of having that kind of business model in the country, or what was, what do you think was the turning point? It was a combination of a few factors. First of all, the, it, was, it did become infeasible. Like the internal contradictions became just too much. Uh, this form of kind of carte blanche solidarity where people are not accountable, uh, was taking its toll. One of the tiny example, uh, but one that uh, shows something was about, I mean, in a kibbutzim. And one of the kibbutzim, the kibbutzim, by the way, have gone through this process in the most extreme form. Many of them have been privatized, and for many people, it's very sad to see. But a small example has been that at one kibbutz, uh, they could not keep pace with the amount of toilet paper that it was being used. And they decided to just put a very, very small price on it. Uh, which again, in a kind of an economy that was, there was no money in the 
boost economy, the internal to boost economy, that was a big deal. And of course, immediately cut them down to like 95% was immediately caught up in terms of use. So when you have an economy where people are not accountable and there's no direct relation and the price mechanism doesn't work, then at one point it does uh, begin to take its toll. The other element was a big ideological shift. Uh, the economy was in a very deep crisis. At that time, the country was already ideologically ready to break with the labor uh, <coughs> ideal. Um, maybe it's sort of a, the new move towards bringing a lot of foreign influence, you know, investment, business ideas. So that same sentiment that drives the nostalgia, mm -hmm. what do you think people think about this, the new sort of foreign influence, and maybe it's less uh, Israeli than, you know, it's more westernized. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly enough, there's less of a, a cultural chauvinism in Israel. So in some countries, you find that they are threatened by globalization culturally. Right. So they feel that, oh, France is changing, or Germany is changing, or whichever country, and globalization is just making the whole world America, or whatever that is. Uh, you have less, less of that in Israel. Uh, there's less of a sense, maybe it's because our, we, we do not have a very, as a, as a state, we do not have a long uh, cultural tradition, uh, maybe because Israel itself is culturally very diverse with Jewish immigrants coming from all over the world. So there's less a sense that globalization is killing our local culture. Uh, there is a sense by which it is kind of this big force that is making it very difficult to sustain uh, such ideals as uh, solidarity and uh, social welfare. Um, things like that. On the other hand, I could also tell you that it is tremendously exciting for many people, the opportunities that were brought by globalization, because it opens up Israel. Israel is, has a very strong kind of siege and island mentality. And part of it is because uh, essentially it, we are surrounded by countries that do not want us here in one form or another. Uh, and you do not have that sense of being able to kind of take your car and drive. Uh, so it's a very, very small country. It's surrounded by a friendly country. And um, so it contributes to the sense of being very closed, uh, a very, this kind of siege mentality. Many people joke that the airport is Israel's most important place. You know, this is a kind of, because we can't just drive out of the other countries that border us, um, there's a sense that this is really, we're an island. And this is our only real communication with the world. So. In many ways, for many people, the feeling is one of freedom and, and an opportunity and because there is this lingering ideal of a mobilized society that has solidarity, but people are wise enough to acknowledge that it was also very, in some ways, very oppressive. Uh, and that if you are not like everyone else, and that uh, if you were in the kibbutz and you wanted to be an artist, but everyone was expected to work the land, uh, then this might not have been the greatest place for you. Uh, it was not a place that appreciated individual uh, kind of idiosyncrasies and individual talents. It was a society that required people to do very specific tasks. So for many people, this is a time of openness and opportunity and an ability to, to express themselves. And globalization, on the whole, is very good for small economies. It allows them to be very wealthy economies. It allows them to depend on the outside world. Uh, it allows um, Israeli filmmakers to finally have a market, to be able to, uh, to, and as a result, they have more work here in Israel. So for many, many people in Israel, globalization has been wonderful. And the sense of unease is precisely because it's good. If it was bad, There'd be no problem. If it was bad, everyone would agree that it's bad and you'd go back to some other form. The fact that it's so good for so many people, but not everyone benefits equally or not everyone partakes in the opportunity, is responsible for the sense.